Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You are here with Austin from Ohio, and today is Thursday, September 9th, 2021. Well, what we've all been waiting for is here. All jokes aside, I know people like to go on and make memes and stuff, you know, on social media and laugh about this kind of thing and this and that, but we're at the point now to where you there's no more joking about this stuff. You you cannot in good conscience joke about any of this. This has gone far beyond anything that has ever been done in the history of mankind. I feel like people don't understand the actual consequences of something like this and how multifaceted it is. And most people that I see, like, well, when I first found this first article here, it's all over the place, first of all, because it was 30 minutes ago, literally 30 minutes ago, as you can see at the top, from 4.35 in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time, so around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when this was published. People on there were saying this is a good idea, find another job, whatever, this and that. They know that people are going to leave their job. They know that. They want that in order for the economy to collapse so they can bring about their one world economy. How much more plain do they have to make it for people to finally get it? Hey, we're building this all-powerful, one-world, totalitarian government. Oh, and by the way, you won't have free will anymore because the technology that we're implementing into you is going to give us control over your mind, essentially. Not even essentially, that's what it is. That's what all the, that's what all the patents show. That's all of it. All of it. We have crossed over from uncharted territory. Now we're into, I don't even know what to call it. That is where we are today. And I really sincerely pray that you are prepared. You, yes, I'm talking to you who's listening right now. I hope that you are prepared to actually deal with something like this. They are squeezing us and squeezing us and squeezing us and nothing short of mass awakening and mass resistance will ever rectify any of this. And I'm going to make myself very, very clear for anybody listening out there. Because I know the NSA listens. I know who all of that. I will not be taking your shot. The only shot that I will take is lead. That's it. I will not take your test. I won't take any of it. Now that we've established that, let me go ahead and jump right into it because I am not one to mess with today because I am really, really, really angry about all of this, that we let it go this far despite knowing about it. We've known about this. We try to tell people, they brushed us off, and now all of a sudden they're, they're accepting it. And people are saying, yes, more of this, please. If you don't like it, go find another job. Yeah, those same people are still going to want to go to Walmart and do whatever, but whenever their local Walmart has a bunch of employees that, you know, said they're not getting it and they can't fill their staff and it's already hard for businesses to fill staff, you know, um, the whole country, the whole world. What do you think this is going to do? And this is only the beginning. This is only the beginning. Biden to announce V, we'll say Vaskeen because that guy said Vaskeen and I really like that and I'm surprised I haven't thought of it. So much goes through my head I can't even 
stop to think anymore, honestly, about what I'm going to say next. I constantly have things run through my head. Anyway, Biden to announce Vaskeen mandate for companies with more than 100 employees. And you might be thinking to yourself, oh, my company doesn't have 100 employees. Like me, myself, I work at a distribution center. We might be close to 80 people in the building. But no, companies with more than 100 employees. So companies as a whole is what they're going to base this off of. The goal is to get every single person in the world to take this Vaskeen. Right? The move could affect as many as 100 million Americans. Think about this, guys. President Joe Biden is announcing Thursday that all employers with more than 100 workers will be forced to require C. Vaskins, Vaskinations, you could say, or test employees weekly. Uh, So I guess the private sector, you know, is not the private sector anymore. You know, it's all one ever since, you know, the onset of the Great Reset. It's all one now. It's just one big fascist fuck fest. And yeah, I cussed. Big deal. As you can tell, I'm not in the mood today for any of it. At all whatsoever. It is past time to be passive. We can no longer just sit here and passively accept and, you know, talk about it here and there and then still do our thing. Like, no, it is... We are there. We are there. Like right now, we are there. Okay, the mandate will be announced Thursday afternoon. It's expected to affect as many as 100 million Americans. The expansive rules mandate that all employers with more than 100 workers require them to be vaccinated or test for the virus weekly, affecting about 80 million Americans, and the roughly 17 million workers at health facilities that received federal Medicare or Medicaid also will have to be fully vaccinated. Yeah, okay. Now we kind of understand why they spent so much time getting all these government programs, getting all these people dependent on everything. We literally depend on them for everything because they forced nothing less. Oh, there's a fire burning in my soul today. There's a fire burning in my soul today. Biden will have OSHA make a rule requiring employees of companies to be tested. Companies will have to pay for the testing, but they can pass the cost on to employees. Yeah, what better way to make people even more poor then to force them to get something, and then, oh, we're not only going to force you to have to go get this, but you're also going to have to pay for it. You are paying for your own genocide. Do you understand that? Do I have to sit here and babysit and spoon feed? I really, really hope not. And my regular listeners, you guys are, you guys know, I'm not talking to you. Whenever I talk like this, I am not speaking to you. You guys already know or you wouldn't be here on a regular basis. I'm talking to any one of the people that come across this video randomly. You need to pull your head out of your ass. Biden is also signing an executive order to require vaccination for employees of the executive branch of contractors who do business with the federal government. With no option to test instead. That covers several million more workers. Oh, they've thought about this. Oh, yes, they have. How do we get so many people to take this thing? Oh, well, how do governments get people to do anything? All you need is fear. During the Nuremberg trials, Hermann Goering, who you guys all know who that is, literally Hitler's right-hand man, When he was asked how they got the German people to go along with all this, he said it had nothing to do with Nazism, had nothing to do with any of that. All you need is fear. That's all a government needs and they can make the people do whatever they want.
In addition to the vaccination requirements, Biden is moving to double federal fines for airline passengers who refuse to wear masks on flights or to maintain face covering requirements on federal property in accordance with Centers for Disease Control and Prevention guidelines. The rule would also require that large companies provide paid time off for vaccination. According to Forbes, businesses that refuse to comply with the mandate will open themselves up to hefty fines up to nearly $14,000 per violation. Uh, what? You can't even refer to the private sector as the private sector anymore because it's not. It's all, it's all government. They built this. More so since 9-11, they've built this national security state. This is where it really comes into play. And people don't see a problem with this. They're just like, yeah, well, I'm afraid of something that's not really anything. So, yep, why don't you just go ahead and take it all away. Not understanding the implications. The implications is what you really have to worry about. In July, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters that a federal vaccine mandate was not the role of the federal government. Oh, well, nice to see how you flip-flopped on that. And they do that all the time. They say they're not going to do something, and then the next day they do it. They've been doing this for a long time. And that is the end of this report here. So, if you don't understand where we are yet, uh... Your job is about to come down on you for not having this thing. I really sincerely pray that you are strong enough to stand in your convictions to resist this. And any any small business that didn't get taken out last year will be taken out by this move. And it's a shame that those are, that are bringing all this on and, you know cheering for all of this, they call people like us stupid. And they say that we're too stupid to do our duty to protect people and all of this. But in reality, it's the exact opposite. Compliance will forward this. In all of history, compliance has always, always, always allowed the government to keep going with their agenda. They need compliance. They don't want you to make waves. They don't want you to say anything. They want you to shut up and do what you're told. <clears throat> Moving on. All right, this next one here comes to us from Truth in Action. And this is huge. This is huge. So not only do we have all of that stuff going on that I just read you guys, but we also have this going on. Pope Francis signs universal peace document with Grand Imam of Al-Azhar. What does that sound like? Pope Francis and Sheikh Ahmed al Taib, who was once named the most influential Muslim in the world, recently signed a document on human fraternity for world peace and living together which forcefully rejects any justification of violence undertaken in the name of God. It also affirms respect for believers of different faiths, the condemnation of all discrimination, the need to protect all places of worship, and the right to religious liberty, as well as the recognition of the rights of women. The document is heralded as a historic pledge of fraternity and lauded as historical breakthrough. There are some big problems, however. One is that there is no reference of any kind to Jesus Christ or to the Bible, of course, because the Vatican is Luciferian in nature. They literally sing hymns worshiping Lucifer, but okay, no big deal there, right? It's just something to look over. Yeah, big deal. Another is that it uses the word God to represent the God of Christianity as well as Allah. The other major problem is that Dr. al Taib has repeatedly contradicted all the lofty sentiments of the document when speaking in Arabic and appearing on Arabic media. 
Let's go over the details of this end times document on the next page. And then I'll have to pause here because it'll be a bunch of pop-ups and stuff. You guys won't notice. All right, so this is the continued version. A universal document of peace signed by the leaders of Christianity and Islam that seeks to end violence committed in the name of God would appear on the surface to be what the world needs. However, as one takes a closer look, serious questions arise as to what the document really represents. When Pope Francis addressed the United Nations in 2015, he said something that left many a bit taken back. The Pope said that he had come in my own name to speak. Supposedly, the Holy Father was the Vicar of Christ, the representative of Jesus Christ on the earth. Although the Bible says the Pope is no such thing, the Catholic Church claims that he is. So why didn't he say that he'd come in the name of Jesus of Nazareth? And this is from uh, John chapter 5, verse 42, 43. Quote, But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Huh. All right. Just another little verse from the Bible that, you know, is spot on, dead accurate today in 2021. You know, oh, but this is some book that was written by a bunch of crazy guys 2,500 years ago. Oh, we can't be holding on to that. Well, you go ahead and you believe that all the way until you die. And then when you have to stand before God and explain why you were a lover of self rather than a lover of God, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it one bit. Because oh, God knows exactly every thought you have, every thought you will have, every thought that you think that you might think in the future. Flash forward to February 2019, the same Pope is signing peace covenant with the leader of Sunni Islam, Sheikh Ahmed al Taib. Not only does the document make multiple references to assembling all the world's religions, uh, that's a one world religion. This is what this is. One world religion, one world government, one world currency, one world military. That is, man will have conquered himself. That's what it is. Sheikh Ahmed al Taib. not only does this document make multiple references to assembling all the world religions, it references God in only a generic sense. There are no Bible verses quoted or referred to, no connection between the word God and Abraham, Moses, or any of the other Bible patriarchs. Why would the Catholic Church, which claims to be the true church, only refer to God generically? Simple, because the document does not invoke or refer to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob found in the Holy Bible. It refers to the generic God of Islam, otherwise known as Allah, which is to say no God at all. It's... it's really about Lucifer. That's what it is. Even in the Muslim religions, a lot of people don't understand this, but in the Quran, you know Jesus is the most quoted prophet in the Quran? I bet you didn't know that. And you can even go check my facts. And I know somebody on here, there's a couple people on here actually that practice Islam, true Islam. And they, they will tell you that. Somebody on here not long ago just said that they are uh, practicing Muslim, but they, you know, worship Christ. How can this be? Well, let me light my cigarette real quick. Sorry, guys. It's, it's really just all converting into the one world religion. And I would say that the Catholic Church is to Christianity, like down here on the ground, as you know, um, this guy or whoever. So that the Pope is to us what that guy is to Islam. So, anyway, but wait, catch your breath. There's more, a lot more. And did you notice that the Pope is kissing the Imam on the mouth? Isn't that how Judas, who both is but the type of Antichrist as well as the coming Antichrist betrayed Jesus? Oh, yes. 
The Vatican document, as you can see here, is quite lengthy. It's packed with tons of information. It's filled exactly the type of verbiage you would expect from someone who was here to either prepare the way for the Antichrist or was the Antichrist himself. 13 times, and 13 is the number of rebellion connected with the devil. The phrase, in the name of, is used in this end times peace covenant. 13 times. And would you like to take a wild, crazy guess in whose name that nothing is addressed to? Not one time. If you said Jesus Christ, you will be 100% correct. It's not about that. We all know the Catholic Church is corrupt. 100%. Their only job was to turn as many people away from God as possible while pretending to be uh, prophets of God. It's incredibly, incredibly deep is what it is. But the fact of the matter is, the agenda is to destroy all existing religions except for Luciferianism. And if I remember, I'll bring up uh, Albert Pike's Three World Wars. Actually, I'll bring that up right after I'm done with this, if I can remember. But like I said, my mind, there's a lot of things that go on in my mind. So anyway, now this is from Psalm 47, 8. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. Here's the reason why nothing is addressed to Jesus. Pope Francis signs a document with his holiness, Pope Francis, and what does that tell you? A quick word. Search in your king. James Bible on the word holiness will answer that question for you. The Pope is not only representing that he sits in the place of Jesus Christ, but I submit to you that Pope Francis sees himself as the Messiah. The Pope also refers to himself as the Holy Father, right? That term only occurs one time in the Bible, and it is reference to God and God alone. Yeah, why do you think the Pope likes to go by the Holy Father? I personally believe the Pope is the false prophet, like the false prophet. The Antichrist hasn't been revealed yet, but he will. He will be very soon. Very soon. And this is from John chapter 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Now, lest you think I'm overstating the case, here's but a small snippet from the Vatican's Universal Peace document. Quote, The firm convictions that authentic teachings of religions invite us to remain rooted in the values of peace, to defend the values of mutual understanding, human fraternity, and harmonious coexistence, to reestablish wisdom, justice, and love, and to reawaken religious awareness among young people so that future generations may be protected from the realm of materialistic thinking and from dangerous policies of unbridled, unbridled greed and indifference that are based on the law of force and not on the force of law. Huh. They're literally saying that, well, the way that I read this is that they are God, that man is God, that their one world religion will be God. And of course, we all know the famous, uh, the famous passage from uh, Thessalonians. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. If you have studied any prophecy at all related to the upcoming time of Jacob's trouble, spent any time at all in either Daniel 9 or Matthew 24, you know exactly what type of language that is. That is the end times language of Antichrist and his coming false peace. This pathetic peace covenant between the Vatican and Islam is a nice little appetizer to the main course of the coming prophesied false peace that Antichrist will broker between Israel and the Palestinians. Count on it. Oh yes. And the, of course we all know that halfway through he breaks his own peace covenant and wages relentless war on the entire in the entire world. Now let me go ahead and bring up uh, old Albert Pike's Three World Wars, or I will forget. <laughs> now a little bit about this letter. Here we are at the uh, Albert Pike's letter to Mazzini. Now Albert Pike, as we all know, he was the. I don't want you guys to read that yet. He was the. Uh, 
Grand Master of Freemasonry. He was a Sovereign Grand Commander of Freemasonry. Uh, I forget exactly which year he was established to be that, but it was all the way until his death. And it took an act of Congress to move his body from uh, the grave in Washington, D.C., the uh, Freemasonic grave where they bury them, I forget, to the, uh, the Freemasonic temple in D.C., and he's buried six feet behind a wall. And this letter was written in 1871, and it was intercepted, and it didn't turn up until 1920, which is after the First World War, mind you. And William Guy Carr, who was actually a uh, Canadian naval pilot, he put this letter in his book. I think the book was called uh, Satan, Prince of This World. Don't quote me on that, but I believe that's what the letter was called. Or, or the book was called, but he ended up, his plane ended up going down, he's dead. So, yes. Mm. But Albert Pike, as we all know, in his book, Morals and Dogma on the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry, I read a bunch of that when I first started my channel. He references Lucifer as the true god of Freemasonry so many times in that book and talks about the privileged uh, what does he call it? Privileged right, or he calls it uh, the 33rd degrees of Freemasonry, like the 33rd degree. Only certain people will ever get there, and he calls those like the privileged few or the privileged right or something like that. The ones with all the, quote, true knowledge of Freemasonry and of the world itself and all this stuff. But he wrote this letter to be delivered to Giuseppe Mazzini, and... That was his uh, European counterpart. It never did make it to Mazzini. And it was actually on display <laughs> in the uh, London National History Museum until 2012 and they took it down. Then they claimed they never had it and they got all the fact checkers who never had it. But if you do enough digging, you could find people who have pictures from inside the museum of the letter itself before it was taken down. So... You guys can go check that out. Now keep in mind, these people invent the terms that we use today when it comes to certain things. Okay, this is what the letter said, and the letter was actually dated August 15th, 1871. The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the czars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agent tour of the Illuminati between the British and Germanic empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Okay, little history lesson. World War One. what happened? Tsar Nicholas was overthrown and the Soviet Union was established at the end, which it was the fortress of atheistic communism, right? Because they had to get Russia, like back then they had to take Russia first because it was a major power controlled by its own people. They couldn't have that because these people want the whole world, right? Okay, so Tsar Nicholas, overthrown in Russia, Soviet Union created Fortress of Atheistic Communism. And we all know that the British and Germans were involved in the war. And at the end of the war, communism was built. And we all know the story of the Soviet Union. And it did destroy all the regional governments. And it did vastly weaken the religions. The Second World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that political Zionism be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would then be restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Okay, we all know World War II, right? World War II, there were, they took advantage of the differences between the fascists, political Zionists, 
Nazism was destroyed. Political Zionism was most definitely strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. International communism did become strong enough and has for like the last 70 plus years or whatever. Balanced Christendom, you know, the world's been at a standstill, right? Restrained and held in check, as he would say it. You know, even regular people will tell you that. Oh, the world's at a standstill right now and nobody wants to do this because then this would happen and that and this and this, this is where this is going. Now, here's where we are. The Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agentor of the Illuminati between political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on the issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. Before I go on, is that not exactly what has happened? Haven't the Jews and the, well, the political Zionists and leaders of the Islamic world, haven't they been involved in a conflict for the longest time? Are they not mutually destroying each other? And are not the other nations are, di are divided on the issue? You know, U U.S. sides with Israel, Russia siding with Iran, you know, China is currently siding with whoever they decide to side with. All the nations are split. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization. And the multitude, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out in the public view. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement, which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. So, during the Third World War, not only is political Zionism and Islam destroying each other, but at the end, Christianity and atheism will both be conquered and exterminated at the exact same time. Is this not exactly what is happening? Haven't world events been kind of urged to go this direction? There's no other way to put it. This is what's happening right here. And if you don't believe that, I really don't know what to tell you. Maybe you should go read Albert Pike's book, Morals and Dogma on the Ancient and Accepted Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. You can order it. Not sure if you'd want to read it because just the bad juju <laughs> that comes from that book itself, in my opinion, but let him tell you who they worship. This is where we are. And this is right in line with the Georgia Guidestones. Everything going on now with the whole, uh, you know, Vaskeen. Right? I saw somebody arguing with somebody earlier because the guy said 1984 is here. And this person was like, oh, 1984, you never even, you never even read that. That's not even close to being the same thing as what's going on now. And the guy was, literally explaining all the, you know, Big Brother type of stuff and the parallels of today, the ominous parallels of today. And the, you know, the brain dead sheep was just like, oh, well, where, where does the mandatory, 
vaccinations come in and trying to protect public health. This is a public health emergency and, you know, just something that you would hear on the six o'clock news. It's ridiculous. This hive mentality, this mob mentality is literally, it always has destroyed everything. In all of history, mob mentality is what is used by governments to stifle the groups they fear the most first. Because mob mentality, you know, the mob, they're, they're the easiest ones to take out. You use them to destroy the ones you fear the most because they're the ones that already do what, you're, what you tell them to do anyway. So you just use them for a certain point in time. That's why they're called useful idiots. And then they're to be exterminated as well. A lot of people don't study totalitarian governments and that's that's one of the problems that we have today. But what do I know, right? I'm just some 27-year-old dude from Ohio that makes videos, right? Moving on. Okay, in my last video that I did, my last actual long video that I did, I started to read this, and it's the whole Build Back Better, where it came from, and it came on the heels of uh, what we were reading that I named How It All Ties In. We read about BlackRock, and we read about all the high-level meetings and stuff, and then I started to read this one, and I read a decent amount of it, but uh, I want to start right here on uh, this paragraph here. So if you wanted to get the first part of it, you can go to my last video. Fast forward to the very end before I do the uh, Lord's Prayer. And I started reading this a little bit just in case you want to. Or better yet, I'll, I'll link this. That's what I'll do because this is a lot of reading. And this is going to take us toward the end of the video. So I really wanted to read this right here because this website is very, very, very good. All right. But first, you think Joe Biden came up with Build Back Better? Do you think that he and his, you know, late stage, whatever he has that causes him to literally lose his mind? He doesn't even know where he's at at the time. You think he came up with this? No, no. This is the same guy that was on video or on audio and video saying, oh, I don't even know what I'm signing. And then the guy behind him, just sign it, just sign it, just sign it. Oh, okay. Come on. All presidents are puppets. Biden's a puppet. Trump's a puppet. Obama, Bush, Clinton, Bush. All of them puppets. No other way to put it. Anyway, I've also been seeing a lot of people saying like, oh, guys, the audits are coming and this and that and hold strong and God has this and whatnot. And listen, Donald Trump was never on your side ever, 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 ever. He is on their side. Always has been. Always will be. There are no audits, even though maybe on paper. Nothing's going to come of it. That's busy work. To keep you distracted into thinking that somebody else is going to come along and do it for you. This is what's really going on. And it's not its not a Democrat thing. And the other side says it's a Republican thing. It's not a Democrat thing. It's not a Republican thing. It's not a country thing. This is a worldwide agenda being brought on by the people that spent vast amount of time and resources and money gaining control of all aspects of the world so they could do this. The 13 families literally own all parts, all aspects of what makes the world run. And then the 13 representatives from those 13 families make up the Crown Council of 13. Those are the people that are actually in in charge, in charge. Anyway. Build Back Better is ostensibly all about natural disasters, specifically the recovery to rebuild process. 
and delving into its his history connects many loose pieces of the New World Order puzzle. Quote, Build Back Better, that's the, you know, the slogan if you haven't heard it by now, but I'm sure you have, signifies an ideal reconstruction and recovery process that delivers resilient, sustainable, and efficient recovery solutions to disaster-affected communities. The motivation behind the Build Back Better concept is to make communities stronger and more resilient following a disaster event. Statistics from the United Nations Environment Program in 2008 show an increase in the number of natural disasters over time attributing to growing populations, urban growth in risk-prone areas due to scarcity of land and global warming, along with increasing frequency. Recent disasters show an increase in magnitude and resulting destruction according to studies by the Red Cross. Both natural and technological man-made disasters have seen nearly exponential rises in the number of disasters over time. Now, how many NWO dog whistling words and phrases did you spot in that brief excerpt? Oh, I spotted about a hundred. No, oh, no, not really, but most of it. And note the mention of technological man-made disasters and how appropriate considering the next noteworthy mention of BBB, the Christchurch earthquake, of course, you know, the one that Hillary Clinton's informant declared was on cue in a communication exposed by WikiLeaks. See above, and then they go based on that there. These are but a small sample of the documentation relating to Build Back Better in relation to Christchurch earthquake rebuild. And although we got sick hearing the word resilient, the phrase Build Back Better was hardly seen or heard outside of officialdom. Now it would seem build back better time has come. The situation is what we've been referring to it here because I don't want to say that or that because this video will get flagged. Has provided a natural question mark disaster of global proportions fitting for the implementation of a global agenda suitable in fact for a new world as the following document boldly and openly proclaims Watch again for the same old coded wording, which I have highlighted. And they provide all these PDFs and stuff in here and whatnot. So all the uh, sources are linked in here. Quote, providing leaders with a broad perspective and inclusion and diversity for new world playbooks. Whilst the outlook remains unclear and businesses face many challenges, there are also real opportunities to reshape the future and for the investment industry to emerge stronger, more resilient, and modernized. Rapid change has already happened and people are expecting more. So let's seize this moment. Inclusivity and diversity are enablers to building back better. Now when it says that people are expecting more, uh, that's manufactured expectation. Of course. Nobody in their right mind, on their own volition, in their own free will, would expect more. Unless, of course, you were, you know, kind of nudged into, be into believing that way. I still can't believe that people can't see through this. We are literally living in... You have information at your fingertips at, at, in this point in time literally have information at your fingertips. You can go and look up anything. And if you look hard enough, you can find the truth of it. But for some reason, we all still just rely on the television to tell us what the news is and tell us what the truth is. No, no, no. As individuals, which that's what really needs to be protected in this point in time. Individualism over collectivism. Because when the collective is favored, the individual suffers. But when the individual is favored, the collective is, well, well taken care of. Because the collective is made up of individuals. You can't have a collective without individuals. That's why we have individual rights in this country, and actually human beings in general, but outlined in our founding documents individual rights. Why do you think the founders were so set on individuality? Are you different from me? Yes. 
Is your index fingerprint different from your middle fingerprint? Yes. Are any two people in the world the same? No. Huh. So why would we do things based on a collective and have policies for everybody as if they were the same? Makes no sense. Okay, with a strong sense that feelings of corporate inclusion have risen during the crisis, we need to leverage this momentum as there is a long way to go. Please note, I have no issues with diversity and inclusivity devoid of hidden meanings. And nobody does, of course. You know, diversity is a great thing, of course. Inclusivity is a great thing. But these people use these things to forward their agendas. That is the problem here. Okay, diversity is a vital factor in all life on Earth, human or otherwise, and is something to celebrate or embrace. The author enjoys working relationships and friendships with people of both sexes, hetero and gay from all corners of the world, from all cultures with all manner of political and religious beliefs. The issue being addressed here is certain words, phrases, and slogans utilized to promote a specific and very inhuman agenda. The meaning is clear to those involved and those inclined to research, but hidden to the general public while remaining comprehensible to all. Yes. And on the same way, you know, I believe in freedom. I don't care if you literally live the exact opposite of me and believe the exact opposite of me. That is your right to believe that, and I will I will fight to the death for you to be able to live your life that way and practice those rights that way. It's not my place to, you know, tell people what to do or what to believe. No way. Okay, so dog whistle, internet slang term, dog whistle politics, the messaging referred to as dog whistle has an understandable meaning for a general audience rather than being incomprehensible. Build back better is a dog whistling slogan. What it really means is destroy first, then reconstruct according to pre-planned global agenda. And that agenda is very much communist, technocratic, and totalitarian. The cyclic dance of creation and destruction, as portrayed in Hindu imagery, appropriated and twisted by a handful of elites who manipulate nature to their own benefit. Kali, the goddess of creation and destruction, projected into the Empire State Building in 2019. Yeah, it wasn't that weird. I remember that. And of course, right outside of CERN, we got Shiva doing the dance of destruction. Shiva in the Shabiite or Shavite. I'm not sure how to say that. Tradition is the all-pervading, eternal, prim primeval consciousness of the universe and beyond. Who is beyond motivation? Hence, he is commonly shown as meditating and tranquil. His actions and motivation occur only prior to final destruction and dissolution of this cycle of creation. Hence, when Shiva dances, it's considered to be terrible, awesome, be the terrible, awesome dance of destruction. It is on the passive, ultimate reality of Shiva that Kali, time, does her dance causing the constant cycles of creation, life, death of all things in the universe. Why is Kali dancing on Lord Shiva? In the video below, the notorious Democrat prayer to Brahma and other gods delivered in the United States House of Representatives January 3rd, 2021 by Representative Emmanuel Cleaver, MO-05, a United Methodist pastor. And we all remember that one. I'm not going to show it, but you can look that in your own time. This now becomes crystal clear. Shiva and Kali destroy the old world to make way for Lord Brahma to begin the creation of a new world, a new normal. The a man and a woman comment may seem like a strange attempt at gender equal speech to the uninitiated. It's really a reference to Shiva and Kali. Oh yes. Oh yes. And then they show this. I'm actually speechless other than to say first day of Navarati Navaratri was lit. And of course it shows Shiva here who's Kamala Harris or uh, Kali dancing on Lord Shiva. Weird, ain't it? 
Hindu groups express anger over tweet by Kamala Harris, niece showing her as goddess Durga. Yeah, that's what it was. The image showed Harris killing Trump, depicted as buffalo demon Maj... I'm not even sure how to say that. Mahisasura. The trident, Joe Biden was the goddess vehicle. Mina Harris slammed for morphing Aunt Kamala as Ma Durga. Biden, her Vaughn, enemy Trump, RepublicWorld.com. Yep, and, th and that's all Hegelian dialectic stuff right there, of course. Build back better, equal pover poverty for the many, greater power and wealth concentrated in the hands of the few. Yeah, anybody that talks about any kind of like, oh, equal level playing field, this and that, that's not the way that it is supposed to work. Think about it, just nature in general. If I, if I make, if all of you guys did nothing, right? Let's say for the sake of this conversation, if all of you guys watching did nothing and I made, you know, a loaf of bread, I made, I grew the wheat, I matured it, I tilled the garden for it, I plucked it all, I got it all ready to go, I made the bread, the bread is now mine, I can eat it, I can sell it, I can throw it on the ground if I want to, I can smash it, I can get rid of it if I want to, it's mine. I did the manual labor from the sweat of my brow, I created it, so it's mine. So why should everybody else get to, you know, be, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Why should everybody else benefit from what I created? If I wanted to, you know, I would share. If I wanted to share with all of you, which I probably would, that's in my nature and that would be my choice. But the reality is, let's say that some third entity comes in and they are the all-powerful state. They take my loaf of bread. They give me one piece. And they say, now you have to divide that piece up between all these people, hundreds of people that watch your videos. Or I'm selfish and terrible and I, I don't want what's good for the common good and this and that and whatever. But they, they just stole my whole loaf. I made that. They stole it, gave me one piece of it, and forced me to share with everybody else. Huh, don't you think that's going to kill my incentive? Aren't I not going to want to uh, make any more bread? I'm not going to want to do that. I'm not going to want to go out there and slave in the field for hours and hours trying to, you know, till the garden, grow the wheat and stuff and mature it and, you know, make the bread. I'm not going to want to do all that because I know that it's going to be taken. I'm going to be given a small portion of it, and I'm going to be forced to divide it up between everybody. That's what's going on here, but on a much larger scale, with more than bread, you know. I'm sorry if I butchered that, guys. I'm real. I'm there. A lot goes through my head on a day-to-day -day basis. I literally can't stop thinking. It's like it's a curse. It's a blessing and a curse, right? Okay, let, let's let's get back to this. The destruction can be accomplished on a local scale with the manipulation and utilization of floods, earthquakes, and extreme weather, and on a more psychological level by harnessing terror attacks for political leverage, or on a worldwide scale riding on the back of a well-coordinated response to a heavily hyped viral situation. And then it refers us to the uh, scenarios for the future of technology and international development, which is the lockstep article, or lockstep document. We actually went through that portion on here not long ago. But yeah, the actual document's called that, the Rockefeller document. The overarching slogan, Build Back Better, encompasses infrastructure, technology, mental health, economics, religion, and of course, politics. You know, and it just goes on about that. We'll skip that currently operates primarily under two credible threats. Credible enough to be tangible and measurable, yet with selected and manipulated evidence to guide and galvanize public opinion and action. These threats, of course, are the climate emergency, aka climate change, and the situation. 
Watch for the slogan on TV in the papers and online. Once you've heard it, you will become attuned to its increasingly frequent usage. And then hopefully this blog gives some insight and joins a few dots. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm not sure if anything else is on here or not. Look at that crap. I've seen that before. I've seen that actually recently. Oh, what a weird website. Yeah, none of that is going on. None of that is going on. Oh, it looks like that's the end of it. I might have something else for you guys. Let's see. All right, I meant to actually bring this up earlier, but I forgot. So we'll just close out with this one. Woman removed from JetBlue flight in handcuffs after refusing to wear a mask in viral TikTok. Whatever TikTok, I don't care about that very much. But what I do care about is that in 2021, you can be removed in handcuffs like you're some, you know, criminal. Well, not even just criminal because criminal is the, you know, definition of people that don't do what the state wants them to do. I would say put you in handcuffs like you're some sort of evil person for not wearing a cloth on your face can you imagine that two years ago if you went near a plane in a mask you probably would have been tackled to the ground by TSA because they would have thought you were a terrorist this is where we are a woman was allegedly allegedly Removed from a JetBlue flight in handcuffs after refusing to wear a mask on board the plane. In a viral TikTok uploaded by whoever, a woman is seen being escorted through the airport in a wheelchair after allegedly causing a three-hour delay to the, to the flight. Uh, she didn't cause a three-hour delay. The terrified sheep on there, the sheeple, they caused the three-hour delay. Oh, you won't put a cloth on your face? You won't restrict your breathing. The caption reads, This woman was handcuffed and wheeled off JetBlue flight after refusing to wear a mask. Our flight was delayed three hours. I just saw the picture. Where did it go? It was right there. Why is that pop up there? There was a picture. Oh, let me try to X this out. I'm kind of scared. Oh, whatever. Video shows the woman arguing with a staff member on the plane. The woman claims to have done nothing wrong, while the flight attendant threatened to deplane the entire aircraft, which ended up happening. Quote, okay, you want to make it hard? We're going to make it hard, the attendant said. I haven't done anything wrong, the woman protested. She added that her daughter is going to college, although it's unclear why she said this. Once the woman was escorted off, everybody else was able to get back on the plane and continue their journey. Yeah, so you see how they turn everybody against you? They say, you're the one that caused this. You're the one that kept the plane down for three hours. You did this. You're holding back everybody. Who is this? Bronx, New York. Decline. I really hate how you can't just go onto a news thing here. And read something because all these pop-ups and people calling me all the time. But anyway, top comment on the TikTok reads, if it's important she stay on the plane, then wear a mask. I do a 12 hours a day, six days a week, not hard or harmful. Uh, I'd beg to differ. Whatever. Another person added, good job, JetBlue. Yeah, you see how they defend the tyrant. Wasn't it Malcolm X that said that if you're not careful with the media, they will have you loving the oppressor and hating the oppressed that's where we are malcolm x was so far ahead of his time in a follow-up video posted yesterday this person said we got delayed three hours i was supposed to be in new york that night and i couldn't even get there i'm in no way shape or form condoning this behavior at all obviously y'all can see tsa does not play it took her off in handcuffs and in a wheelchair she also clarified the woman was wearing a mask, but she kept putting it up and down, leading the confrontation. She added, y'all don't play with the TSA. Don't be like this woman. Be safe. Uh, to be a coward? Is, 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 is this the America that we live in now that we want, you know, our children to 
grow up in? Whatever happened to freedom-loving people? It's gone. It's all gone. Everything's gone. I can't believe this. On JetBlue C-19 Information Hub, they state the mask is not an ask. Federal law requires masks to be worn by all travelers two years and older at all times throughout the flight, including during boarding and deploying in the airport. Federal law? Federal law. I would like to see that federal law because it, there's no law. Mandates and executive orders are not laws. We have been ruled by executive fiat the last 18 months. No law was ever passed any of this. I want to see this federal law that went through the House, the Senate, and to the President's desk after deliberations for weeks on end and subject to public scrutiny. Guess what? Never happened. They said, oh, executive order, wear a mask. Executive order, get your shot. Executive order, all companies have to mandate all of it. Any individual who fails to comply with this law may be subject to denied boarding, removal from aircraft, or penalties under federal law. Refusing to wear a mask certainly seems like a more valid reason for removing someone from a flight compared to this musician who was apparently deplaned for wearing a crop top. That also happened. They keep going on about federal law. No law says that you have to wear a mask anywhere, actually. No law whatsoever. I would love to go to court. I would love, I wouldn't go with anything. I'd go right by myself, represent myself, and I would say, show me the law. Not an executive order, not a mandate. Show me the law. Oh, well, uh, 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 executive order, no, 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 no. You said federal law. Show me the law or I'm getting back on that plane. And if it is a law, then we have completely lost our country and we should have been taking up arms. As a figure of speech, wink, wink. This is where we are. They, they just make, they make shit up on a daily basis. They're literally making things up right now. Pretty soon it's going to be, oh, federal law says that you got to get your shot. No laws were ever, ever, ever passed saying that you have to wear a mask on an airport. Actually, I'm pretty sure there are laws, actual laws out there that says that you can't cover your face at an airport because of security concerns and national security. But, you know, all that's out the window now in 2021 because we live in some kind of dystopian novel I don't get it I don't get it but this is serious this right here is literally just the beginning we are about to see oh man we are about to see we are about to see a lot of things transpire within the next few months and you know what Winter time's coming. They're going to make it impossible to participate in society. Just as we foresaw. I don't know what else to say, guys. I really don't know what else to say. The only thing that I can say now is may God have mercy May God have mercy on the people of Babylon. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.